Hi, I'm Dave from Cloverleaf, and we're going to finish the project that we started in the last episode. We're going to put the guide flag into the car, we're going to solder the leads to the motor, and then we're going to get ready to run on a wood track. So it's not uncommon on scale electric cars that we have to make some type of accommodation for this space, this recess here where the guide flag goes. I put the new guide flag in this place. It actually drops down too far. It fits in there, but it drops down too far. I could use some washers and bring that up or bring it down towards the track. But there's a company that makes a, a product that I like to use. It's a company called Beanova, and they make different size adapters specifically for this occasion, for Scale Electric. It's, it's basically a washer, a thick piece of plastic with a hole where the guide flag goes. And I'm going to just set it in there. And that'll take up all that extra space that is making my guide flag go too high up towards the chassis. Okay, so you can see how that sets in there. Now, I'm just going to glue that in place. And people love how I glue. I'm just going to spill it in there. Typically what you would do is, what most people would do is apply it with a toothpick, but I'm just going to drop some in there, move this back into position, whoops, went too far. Okay, so I've got that ready to go. You can see that that adapter, that spacer is all set in there. When I put the guide flag in, it won't go nearly as far as it used to, so it fits nice. It's not dropping so far. So what this is going to allow me to have is my guide flag closer to the track when I have my car all set up. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to just put my front axle together. Slotted axle, my CBD wheels. There's no trick here. Just putting this together. Again, we might want to use some spacers between the inside of the wheel and the, the chassis of the car. But at first, I'm just going to do it this way and see where we, we end up. And as I look at this, I can see that my axle is quite a bit longer than the width of the car. So I'm not going to be surprised if I end up using some spacers, but I just want to get all four wheels on the ground, get an idea of what size space we all need. Okay, so there we are with that. We got the front, front axle installed, we got the back axle installed. Now, what I like to do is use the original wheels. You can use, or I'm sorry, the original tires. This is the tires, the front tires that came off the car, and I'm just going to stick them back on here. They're, you can use aftermarket tires, you can use slotted tires, Zero Grips or NSR or, or whatever brand you prefer. I'm just going to go with these to hopefully maintain the look of the car so it looks like it did before I replaced the front axle. And what we'll notice here is there's a little concave to the tire. The outside, the edges of the tire are actually a little bit higher than the middle of the tire. I'm not going to be too concerned about that. If I, I could sand that down. This is rubber. It sands very easily. I could cut it down with a razor blade as it was spinning. But I'm not really going to worry about it at this point. Um, again, this is something that if it becomes a problem, I will address it that, at that time. So my car sits on the track, sits nice and square. Let's put the guide flag in. 
And now I have a good idea of where to cut that. You can see I've got just a little bit protruding here. So let me just cut that off of there. I have flush cut side cutters. And this would be easy if I had that axle out, but I'm just gonna do it from this side. So here we go, I'm just gonna cut that off of there. Get that out of the way, just make sure it's nice and even. Actually what I'm gonna do, because I didn't cut it quite even, so I'm gonna go ahead and just sand it flat. Okay, got it sanded flat. Put the guide flag back into the, the front of the car. I'm gonna need a screw and probably a washer to hold that together. And in this little container, I keep all the screws and washers that I need. There we go. Of course, the washer helps keep the screw head from going through the hole that holds the guide flag, keeps everything together. Let's see. Screw that down. I don't want it too tight. I want, I, I want that to move rather freely. Sometimes when you put the screw in, the shaft of the guide flag expands a bit and it, it makes it a little bit tighter. This one's a little tight. Um, I could fix that by either using a smaller screw or enlarging that hole a bit. I think if I just oil it a bit, that's gonna loosen it up. I wanna move along though and show you how to install the, the lead wire for the motor. So here's some lead wire. Again, I get this from Slot Car Corner. I like using two different colors. Some people use the same color, but I like using two colors to give me a left and a right. Now, typically you'll use a ferrule to attach the wire to the guide flag. But Slotta has been using set screws, little grub screws, and I find that that works really well. Again, it's a preference. So whether you wanna use ferrules or set screws, it doesn't make a difference. The end result is the same. So I've got a set screw on my driver. I'm gonna put the wire in the guide flag and just screw the set screw. If you can see that. So I'm just screwing that into the guide flag. And I'll do the same thing for the other side. Now you'll notice I haven't cut the wire yet, but I like to cut the wire once I get the wire attached to the guide flag. I have found that it's easier for me to cut the wire afterwards, after I've attached it to the guide flag, I used to solder it to the motor first and just cut it at a random length and then try to get it all together at the front. I found it was easier if I actually did the front first and then cut it to length going to the back to the motor. So here's the left side. This is just what I do. I put the black on the left side, the yellow on the right side. It's just the two colors I use and that's, I always put the yellow on the right side. 
again, you could use one color, and you could switch it up, but it doesn't really matter. Now this, as I said, when I leave it long like this, let's put this back up here for a moment. You can see, I get a really good idea of where I need to cut my wire now. And it turns out that one wire always has to be a little bit longer than the other one. So I don't cut it even. I'm actually going to cut one longer than the other. Use my side cutters. I'm going to give myself a little, I'm going to give myself a little extra length so I can route the wires if I need to without them binding, making sure that the, the guide flag can turn freely and won't get inhibited. Now, on this particular motor, the closest tab, the way this is oriented, the way the motor's oriented, the closest tab goes to the left side of the flag. The tab closest to the back, the furthest one from the front, goes to the right side of the flag. And I say that because if the motor was turned around, then we'd have to switch that around where the left flag would go to the back. So there's a, there's a, a, a right way to wire this. Otherwise, my car is going to go the wrong way on the track. I'm just going to strip. I just strip a little bit off of there, too. Okay, I don't need to strip a lot. I just want to strip a little bit. Now we get to a point where there seems to be a fair amount of confusion, apprehension about how to solder. Now, soldering is not that difficult. Basically, all you're doing is taking a piece of metal and, or a, I'm sorry, the wire and melting some metal to hold it in place. I always like to use flux. Some people say, well, the solder that I use has flux in it. It's true, it does. But I find that when I apply flux uh, from a paste flux, that it cleans up. As it heats up whatever I've applied flux to, it really cleans up the joint, makes the solder flow that much easier. And now I'm going to put flux on everything, everything being the ends of the wire before I solder them, and then the motor tabs before I solder them or even re-solder them. There's already solder there, but I'm going to still put flux on it. And then I'm going to do what we call, we're going to tin the ends of the wire. Here's my soldering iron. I'm going to turn it up a little bit, make sure I have enough heat. The solder itself probably melts around 300 degrees, 400 degrees, so I need to at least have my soldering iron that warm. It doesn't need to be six or 700 degrees. If you use that much heat in your soldering iron, you could damage your motor and uh, you could prematurely wear out the tip of your soldering iron. You need it hot enough to melt the solder, but not so hot that you will damage your motor. I also have a sponge here with some water because I like to clean my tip. Now some people will use a cloth and just clean the tip. I've always used a sponge. Let's get back to tinning the wire. So now my tip is clean. I've got flux on the wire. I've got flux on the motor leads. I'm going to apply solder to the end of the solder iron. You can see I've got a little drip there. It's going to be more than enough. And I just apply it to the wire. And you can see it, it all turns silver. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to tin the black one now. Yep. Now, I would tin the motor leads, the motor tabs, if they didn't have solder on them. But these already have solder on them. I'm not going to worry about that. But I am going to put a little bit more solder on my soldering tip. I put it on the tip, put the wire in place, and put the solder iron into the top of the wire. And the wire, everything melts together. And I was on there for maybe a second. Don't hold the soldering iron to the motor tab. The motor tab's connected to the brushes. The brushes, well, there's a piece of wire that actually connects to the brushes. That wire is very thin, and it doesn't take much heat to distort that wire, causing the brushes to, uh, to misalign or to completely not touch the armature altogether. Either way, whether they misalign or it, it 
typically or completely misses the armature altogether, your motor is not going to work. So let's do the same thing on the other lead. Put the solder on the soldering iron. I've already got solder on the lead wire. I've already got it on the motor. And now I'm going to put the soldering iron on top of the wire and just let it all melt together. There we are. And that's a soldering job. So I've connected the leads to my motor, and I really don't need to do anything more than that. I've put the front axle in. I've got tires on there that I may or may not keep. I depends on whether I like these tires. I'm not too concerned about the front tires. I've got my back tires on. I've got the gear. This car is all ready to go. I just need to put it back together. Put the body on it. Okay, so as I look at this, I had there were some concerns I had. One being my back tire, my back gear. I don't want anything rubbing there. I want to make sure that the tire is with is inside the body. And if we can look at this, I've actually got a little room here. It might be difficult to see, but there's a little room. If I had a straight edge. I could actually bring this tire out a little bit, and I might still do that, just to get it away from this gear. And this side is actually could come out a little bit. I could put a spacer in there. I would have to put a spacer in there, because otherwise my, uh, my axle will be loose. This is what I'm looking for. And I don't want a loose back axle. Any of these cars built for the home track, they're notorious for having a loose back axle. And by loose, what I mean is, I get this, well, I didn't tighten that down. I get slop in the back axle. That slop in the back axle is really going to hinder your performance. It's going to make your car chatter, going around the corners. Yeah. And I set it up right. I was trying to set, set it up wrong so I could show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, I've over-exaggerated that, but... It's not uncommon to have some of that in a car straight out of the box. We don't want that. So I'm going to bring that wheel and tire in just so it's right next to the bearing, the bushing there. And now I don't have any of that slop. Um, some people like to have a little slop in there where they can't see it, but they can feel it. Uh, the issue there is, is you don't want this too tight that it's actually causing binding. Um, my feeling is, is you can get it closer than, it, it could be laying on the bushing or that bearing in there and not be binding. And that's where I like to put it. It's just easier for me to put it there. I don't know if I can get it. Let's try this. So I've tried to move that away a bit. Yeah, I still don't feel any slop in there, but as I say, if you don't see it moving and it's rolling free, then then you're in a good position. It's not binding. That's what you're really worried about. Now, the other concern I had as I was putting this together was I wanted to make sure that the wheels and tires are basically out as far as they can be. And you can see I've got a little room here. Here's the edge of the tire. Here's the edge of the car. So that could come out a bit. And you see I've got that side-to-side -side slop there. So... So I'm going to need to put some bushings in here, some spacers in there. Not bushings. I'm going to put some spacers in there. Let's see what I've got here. These are slot car corner spacers. These happen to be 0 .05 of an inch wide. I think it's going to give me just what I need. I'm going to put them in both sides. One on each side. Well, it looks like I can use more. I put one in and I still I still got the edges of the tire the side of the car. I really want to move that out further. I want to move it out there. So I'm going to try two of these 
spacers on each side. So a total of four spacers. There we go. That's much better. I could move it out a little bit more, but I'm going to go with that. I don't want to... That's going to be fine for me for right now. So I'll need one more of these. Oops. Got plenty now. Now, you can, if you're anticipating, you're going to see that I don't have the axle lined up very well. I've got more axle coming through the wheel here. I don't have any of the axle coming through the wheel there. So I need to adjust that a bit. I'd like to have the same amount coming through on both sides. At the same time, I don't want a whole lot of it coming through either. Uh, just, again, for, the, for appearance sake. It doesn't hurt anything. Just some people don't think it, it looks good if it, if you got a you know the Ben Hur chariot axle thing sticking through your wheel. Now make sure it's not binding. It's not binding. That's that's rotating really well. I'll put the wheels back on or the tires back on the wheels. These, these tires aren't great. I think what I would do is sand them down a bit. I'd make sure that they're round, that they're true. I, I don't know that I would glue them to the wheel. Some people would, but I wouldn't, I, just because I don't do that. Um, what I would do is I would coat the outside of the wheel. I'd coat this surface right here, either with super glue, uh, super glue with a brush, works really well, or a nail polish. Nail polish has a brush, so as I spin one, I'm brushing the glue or the nail polish onto the tire, let it dry, and then do the other side. And that way, you get a nice, slick surface on your tire. You don't want any friction on the front end of the car. This guide, this guide's still a little tight. I'm going to go back and address that. This is going to cause, this friction is going to cause my back end to swing out too. So I don't, I want to remove the friction there. At the same time, I don't want any slop in the guide, and I really don't have that. I just, I just need to open that hole up just ever so slightly. So... I need to be aware of that. Reduce, remove the friction on the front end. Make sure my back tires are trued and glued. Screw the body together. And I think this car is ready to go on a wood track. Now, I may still need to add some weight, but I've got a really good place to start. Um, the wheels have changed a bit, the look of the wheels. I went with a five-spoke wheel from um, CBD Designs. So it doesn't quite look like this. I could have used some black wheels, uh, black five-spoke. I could actually paint these if I wanted to. I could paint them red. They take paint really well. It depends on what you want your car to look like. The other thing I could do is actually make a wheel insert out of this wheel, stick it in an insert wheel, and then it would give it the, the original look, just like it did when I pulled it out of the box. We'll talk about doing that on another video, but that's another option I have. I could change the wheels completely. Um, so that's kind of neat. That's one of the neat things about changing things like this is I can change the look, customize it a bit. I get that a lot too. What can I do to my car to make it different than somebody else's car? Changing the wheels is an easy way to do that. The last thing, and I talked about this before, is I still want to sand down the edges to give my car some body float. But aside from that, I'm about ready to put this on the track and make some final adjustments. So between the soldering, changing the guide flag, changing the back end, um, nothing too terribly difficult. If you take your time, you can take one of your cars that you typically race on a plastic track take it to the store, race it on a wood track, and you'll find that you're as competitive as anybody else. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Stay tuned for the next one. We'll see you then.